Uh, uh, kia ora tātou anō. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but I presented my entire presentation, so we'll start again. Um, so we just got up to this um, slide, um, apparently, when, when things went blank. Um, in addition to looking and understanding about our past and our present in order to know where we're going to go in the future and how those can inform um, our future pathways, I think we also, um, when it comes to equity from a Māori perspective, need to start clearing away some of the undergrowth um, that occurs, you know, for example, um, with harakekia. Um, and this whakatauki, uh, tūmia um, te uru rua, ki a tūpū whakarito rito te tūpū um, o te harakekia really speaks to that need to under to clear away the undergrowth so that we can get some new um, thinking and and new ways of doing things. So when we um, <clears throat> look at um, equity for Māori health, I mean, I think we need to really be clear that equity sits um, clearly with, uh, within one of the articles um, of Te Tiriti or Waitangi under Oritanga. So... Um, it's something that uh, Māori were um, affirmed um, early, um, very, you know, like almost 200 years ago um, with the signing of Te Tiriti. So we we really need to think about it. And if we think about, um, you know, the undergrowth that has, has accumulated under the harakeke for all these years, um, doing more of the same is not going to affect any change um, for our people. Um, we have issues around access, um, the quality of services, access to determinants of health that impact upon um, the outcomes in, in the health sector. So it's for Māori, it's more, though, than just achieving equity. It's more than, um, yeah, just just having the same outcomes as everybody else. For Māori, we want um, healthy futures, and He Korawai Oranga and Fokamoa give us signposts of how that can be achieved. So healthy futures requires us to not only just have healthy people, but healthy fano and healthy environments that we live with. Within and um, and te tiriti, uh, should the the principles should underpin that. So why two five seven five report um, into the primary health care um, sector has suggested some um, quite useful principles that move us beyond um, partnership um, participation and protection um, into um, looking at as equity being one of those. Um, those things in addition to partnership, um, choice, um, and, and so forth. So in 2019, um, Dr. Ashley Burnfield um, talked about um, the differences that exist in our health um, for population groups such as Māori, Pacific, um, the disabled community um, and and our older people um, that these differences um, for the most part avoidable and they can be considered unfair and unjust and in order to um, if we take an equity approach we need to look at um, different ways of doing things with um, those groups of people so the services that are delivered in a universal way are not necessarily going to achieve the outcomes. They haven't achieved them now and they're less likely to achieve them into the future. So we need to look at different ways. And the new um, health system um, delivers um, promise around um, having a different way of doing things. Um, so, and that means that we need to um, have an understanding of how we've got to where we are today to look at the things that we need to um, consider. 
like listening to our whānau, listening to our whānau hapu iwi and um, Māori communities, listening to our Māori providers, um, because they're the greatest asset in terms of um, accessing and reaching our people. Um, so, but who gets health care? Um, in 20, 2009, um, Morgan and Simmons really interrogated this from an economic perspective of our health system and found that who gets treated really depends on things like price or cost, need, where you live, advocacy and queue jumping. But also um, we need to consider into this as well um, access to determinants of health and they can um, you know, the lack of access to some necessary determinants like transport, education and so forth um, can make a big difference in terms of how we um, navigate and access health services. But their concern was that our health systems fill with a well a middle class. But I'd also like to say too that we must be mindful that Māori are overrepresented in an avoidable or amenable mortalities and preventable hospitalizations, and are more likely to be um, readmitted um, after they've been in hospital. So, with some research that's been done, you know, qualitative research with Māori and whānau um, over the years, when we start looking at this, we can see that there are some key areas um, that that consistently come up. So, the environment that um, of health services that Māori are coming in, um, not having their worldview acknowledged, um, not um, feeling welcome, um, having difficulty knowing what the rules of engagement are, ineffective actions, um, you know, negative receptions, being marginalised, being silenced, um, unmet needs. Um, so going to health services and coming away with not having the issues um, um, addressed um, racial discrimination is um, not you know commonly reported and um, outcomes um, so the outcomes that impact on the trust that that Māori whānau or whānau Māori have on um, about the health system and engaging in in the future is quite um, a deterrent as well so We also need to um, consider the, the issues around racism and discrimination. Um, we know um, that there's institutional racism um, and people um, talk about that a lot. Um, but if we're, we're looking at equity, um, I'm, I've got some growing dis-ease around the use of um, explanations that say, oh, it's just structural racism or it's systemic racism. Our systems and structures don't exist on their own. They exist with the people within them. Um, and so as nurses, we need to be um, speaking up and challenging some of the issues that we think um, are not equitable or are not going to achieve an equitable outcome. So um, we do need to, to um, interrogate that whole notion of um, can, can structures or can systems on their own um, perpetuate this? And um, yes, it can when the people within them also, you know, um, are the ones setting the policies and um, planning the services, etc. cetera. Um, there's also interpersonal racism. I don't know how many times I've listened to people that I've done research with who speak at length about the racism that they encounter, and it is a big deterrent from um, one needing to access services and could in part explain why sometimes um, Māori are late to presenting to services, but also really concerning is the internalisation of that racism by Māori themselves who start believing um, some of the things that are said. So they all those three things um, impact on our access to determinants of health 
access to services and, and quality of care. And for Māori, um, there are differences all along that pathway. The other thing that I think is really important in our system is, is around, um, which is, uh, impacts on equity a lot, is the health effects that racism have. Um, this is New Zealand research by um, Ricky Harris and her team and Donna Cormack and her team around, um, around the effects of racism on people's health. And we can see here that um, the prevalence of racism for Māori is about probably 1 in 10 people and, um, there, and well over that um, experience multiple forms of racism and we need to think about racism as not just one-off events it has a dose response um, relationship to people's health so the more incidents of racism people experience leads to poorer health so that's that is concerning when the place that you need to go to get um, you know some help with your health um is going, to, is going to make you um, worse off. So um, something to keep in the back of our minds. But, you know, um, I, you talked about systemic racism, but also we need to think about the, our use of just explaining stuff away um, as unconscious or implicit bias, because what I see is people say, oh, that's, you know, unconscious bias or that's implicit bias um, and nothing's done. Well, whether it's unconscious or implicit, it has an effect and an impact. And, um, you know, there, there are, I've got incidences where it really raises the question, is this bias by design? So at the moment, I've got a student with, um, doctoral student who's been working with rangatahi and um, they have got um, multiple examples of how they're treated and they're seeing how they're treated differently from other people um, when they access health services. So te huri hānai um, o whakaaro me te mahi, Transforming Thinking and Doing, is a framework that we have developed, um, or theory of change, that utilises um, some of our um, whakapapa, around Tikori, where there's this um, great void or space, but it's full of potential and energy. And um, that can be, you know, we can use that in our health services or our nursing practice for what are the conditions that we need to create for change, um, to transform futures, and um, for, for us to think differently about our nursing practice um, and, and what informs it. Um, and moving to Te Pua, which is um, the, the darkness, the, the varying shades of darkness going from the darkest of darks where you can't see your hand in front of your face to um, the, the less dark period where you can see shapes and forms and what have you. And this is a space where we can do those, have those transforming conversations about what we know and what we do. And then Te Ao Marama, um, the world of enlightenment, it is around how we're thinking differently to create safe and mana enhancing practice for people. So we're wanting to, you know, to move our thinking and doing from that to kore through to Te Ao Marama. So, you know, I really want um, to stress that culture counts. Um, it's how we... Um, create our views of the world it's how we create our understandings of health and well-being um, illness and disease is not um, something you know our health systems built around but for Māori um, you know concepts like wai order and hau ora are more around health and well-being um, so we need to understand how people see their health and well-being um, we need to understand too that um, those views guide our health behaviours and health practices, what's important and what's not so important. And I think with all the research that I've done, 
spirituality, wairua and whānau, our extended family networks are important groups, um, are important for um, um, Māori. So, and also establishing relationships. Um, it, it's crucial for not only interactions, but for it receiving and processing information. So making those connections and introductions, who we are, where we're from, encounters that are kānohi ki te kānohi or face-to-face -face and, um, and, and, and continuity of care where possible. So I, I do admit that's a bit difficult. So um, with some colleagues at Counties Manukau um, Health, we have um, undertook a lit review and looked at nine Māori models of health and wellbeing um, to look at what we need to do to create an Indigenous Māori-centred model of relational care. Um, and so out of the lit review um, came um, building relationships as a cultural imperative so we know that the processes of uh, pōhiri, mihi whakatau and what have you are really important for engagement. So, you know, that those introductions, saying who we are and where we're from and, um, and yeah, showing people that we're willing to interact in a relational way is really impossible, uh, important. So that relational care is important for engaging with Vanu Māori and um, certainly um, these culturally based um, values and concepts um, that can um, direct practices that are important. I'm just going to flick over this next one, but it really shows the frameworks at the top, but the sorts of dim various dimensions around um, that we looked at across all those models. We developed a framework uh, for relational care for Māori. Um, so if I start, you know, it's acknowledging the importance of whanaungatanga, whakapapa, uh, whenua, our connections to our land, um, whānau and Modi, uh, which um, underpin everything and are woven through the spariki, and then um, the processes of whakawhanaungatanga, um, tikanga, in, in, in um, engaging with people, aroha and manakitanga, so approaching people in a compassionate and empathetic way and um, and looking after them, manakitanga, um, and being hospitable um, and, and, and then mana, of, which is, you know, um, we want to enhance people's mana, we don't want to diminish it um, from their encounters in health services and certainly with nurses. And sitting around there, those are all really important things for our wairua, for our whānau, for our hininaro and um, and for our tinana. But we can't look at um, improving equity for Māori health without looking at things like the socio-political health context within which the current um, health status for Māori sits um, and the marginalisation, colonisation and migration or internal migration like um, moving from rural areas to the city and, and vice versa and the racism that they encounter. So we need to be aware of all of those things and where they've come from to inform how we need to move forward um, with our practice. And the other thing um, is practicing with humility. I, there, there is a bit written around cultural humility, but humility is an important um, characteristic or quality uh, for Māori, so um, we need to make sure that whatever we do is beneficial, that we look and listen before we speak, that yes, we might be um, um, experts in our area of practice, but whānau are experts about their life, and we just have a sliver of time um, with our whānau um, so it's impossible for us to know everything about them. So we need to look and listen very carefully um, and ask questions if need be. Um, Western-derived evidence is li limited, so we need to recognise the limitations sometimes in the evidence that we're using, and I could go into that a lot further, but we don't have the time for that. Um, 
we we should be prepared to have an equity and cultural analysis laid over our practice and looking at you know what things are working and working well and what things aren't and how do, how do we go about changing that who are the people that we need to be involving in that um, those discussions and conversations and we also need to explore the dissonance that exists between the rhetoric of nursing about um, you know all the things that we profess to be about but the actual reality for um, Māori whānau um, coming into contact. And, and, you know, when we're changing or transforming our thinking and doing, we can do this by nudging. So little little shifts and changes at a time, although I do admit um, our whānau and, um, and um, some of our communities are... Um, um, you know, are, are short on, you know, are, are running out of patience around that. Um, so if we look at um, the work on wayfinding leadership, you know, I, I really fundamentally believe that nursing can be leaders um, in, in the equity space. Um, but we need to have those relationships with with Māori, with whānau, hapu, iwi, um, Māori health providers, Māori communities, um, as it applies to our practice. But wayfinders um, go beyond what they think they know, and they go on a journey of discovery and looking at um, looking at things that are really going on, and that includes how we got to where we are today, um, discerning the detail, seeing the whole, and trying to get a deeper understanding of not only themselves in this picture, but also those who are involved in our whānau health experience and the environment that we we have. So, you know, I think I think we need to understand that when you don't have money or you don't have access to reliable transport, getting to appointments can be a problem. Or getting to vaccination stations, for example, can be a, a problem. So the buses are a really good idea, um, I think. Um, but, you know, Brene Brown, um, she she talks about us having to dare to be brave. And that is around having the courage to be vulnerable and recognising it's not about winning or losing, but having the courage to show up. Um, when we can't always predict or control the outcome. And I think, um, you know, if we are respectful and we engage with our whānau um, in, in a positive way, um, that that unpredictability or that loss of control um, can lessen. And Isabel um, Wilkerson, who's, uh, who's done some... Um, has written a book around caste and um, talks about how racism is entrenched in some of our um, institutions. Um, she really offers these words of saying few problems are ever solved by ignoring them. And so in terms of equity from a Māori perspective, I think as nurses we need to look at um, how we can be part of achieving equity or improving equity in the areas that we are. I realise that we can't change determinants of health, but we certainly can have an impact on the quality and safety of care that our whānau get. So I just want to um, close up now. So nō reira, kia ora hura te marino. Kia whakapapa paunamo te moana. Kia huarahi mā tātou i te rangi nei. Aroha atu, aroha mai, tātou ia tātou katoa, hui e tai ki e. Thank you. Uh, tēnā koe whaia, Denise. Hea tāua tō kōrero kia tātou tēnei. Uh, Ata tēnei ahi ahi. Uh, hea, hea aroha. Uh, e nui ngā hua. So I was just saying, Fire, that I learned a lot about what you're talking about today. And I know um, a lot of our values, a lot of people don't really understand how to uh, how to implement our values. But I, I wanted to talk, say to you, to, to
talk to you about three words, being tika, being puno, and doing it with aroha. And that's the key, I think, for it's being honest and upfront, uh, being um, uh, true to your word, but trying to do it with aroha, because if we are a little bit too stern, our whanau get a little bit turned off. So, nui ngā mihi kea koe whaia, te ngā koe mai te ngā koe te rawa, have a, re- a lovely rest of the day, or if you're going to stay here and join us, I hope you join the, uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Ngā mihi kea koe. Ngā mihi kea koe.